A new medical study suggests that COVID could explain a sudden jump in cases of pediatric hepatitis, that severe liver inflammation in children. The World Health Organization reported around 650 probable cases of pediatric hepatitis last month, and most of them the cause is unknown. The CDC is now investigating more than 270 cases in this country alone. The new study from Israel focuses on just five children, ranging from three months to 13 years old. But if COVID could tell us how, but it could tell us how COVID is affecting our kids. CBS News medical contributor, that's Dr. David Agus, joins us now with more on this. David, when I heard it was just five kids in the study, can you really draw conclusions from just five children? No. No, it's certainly not a definitive study, but it's a piece of data. And now when, you know, kids are suffering, we're looking for every piece of data we can. In these five children, they looked in their liver and they found no presence of what we call adenovirus. That was the hypothesis going in that was a particular type of adenovirus causing this hepatitis. But what they did find is every child had had COVID in the past. Very common, obviously, to have COVID, um, but we're starting to see that this may be, and they're actually calling it long COVID liver, that it may be an effect of COVID on the liver and making them more susceptible either to another infection or this being COVID directly. It's important that we think about this and look into that data. So they only linked it because all five kids had just happened to have had COVID. Is that, is that the connection? Yeah, if you look just at you know, adults who do have COVID, we've also seen in adults that you can get some liver damage. And there certainly is the ACE2 receptor, which is COVID vined all over the liver. And so the common thing and the theme with all of them was they had a prior COVID um, and there really wasn't anything else. They didn't find any other virus in the liver. When you look globally, most of the kids who've had this were not vaccinated. So 86 percent mm. did not receive a vaccine. And there seems to be some correlation there. Again, this is early, but we have to do everything we can to protect these children. And certainly if vaccination could prevent, we should be doing it more in children because we haven't been doing it well here in the United States. So once you get it, how do you treat it? So in this study, um, they had kids who presented very similar ways. And when they gave them steroids, they got dramatically better. And again, this isn't really a study. This is an observation. Um, but, you know, we have not deployed steroids routinely in treating it in the United States. And it's certainly something that will be put into clinical trials now. Um, most kids get better on their own with this. And a very small fraction will go on to liver transplantation. Mm -hmm. And a remarkably few have died of this horrible, horrible situation. Let's talk about uh, the Pfizer vaccine for uh, COVID for kids under, for, what do they say, six months to under, under five, between six months and five, five years old. Um, it looks like that is going to be approved very soon. And if that happens, when could, when could parents start giving the vaccine to their children? Yeah, yeah, these are big steps. You know, there's one cohort of kids in the country, one group of people that haven't been able to be vaccinated, and that's the under five. And so you're going to see today and tomorrow the FDA review the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine, and they could be available as early as next Tuesday for parents in this country. And it is an enormous step forward. The Pfizer vaccine obviously been tried in tens of millions of kids over the age of five, the Moderna vaccine in thousands of kids under five. And the hope is we will have two vaccines to treat these kids to prevent them from getting long COVID or serious complications of COVID. Yeah, a lot of parents are very excited about this, and other parents are like, oh, I'm not so sure. But for you, you're saying, look, if you can get it for your children, please do so. Yeah, it's not the fact that they're going to be hospitalized or serious illness, which is very uncommon, but it is the long COVID that I do worry about. And yes. so if you can vaccinate your yeah. child, there really haven't been negative effects. Do it, do it, do it. All right, David. I am convinced. I am a believer. Thank you very much.